guys, my name is Emily, and today I wanted to talk about, I guess just an update, and, okay, it's just going to be a hot mess random things I want to talk about, which you guys love, so I'm just going to start. First off, whew, I'm like, my anticipation is like, boiling up in me. I got an appointment to get my dental implant and I am terrified. Like anytime I think about it, my hands just start to shake and um, I'm much more fearful than when I got my tooth taken out because it just like, in my mind it was like they were going to take out all the bad and like you know, my face being huge and they were going to take all of the like bad stuff out. But this is like jamming a bunch of stuff in my mouth. So that seems like it'd be really painful. Um, and they haven't really told me much about it. Like the only thing they said to me was like not to eat or drink for eight hours before it. And I just thought it was kind of weird that they didn't tell me more. Cause like I know from my last surgery, like I wasn't allowed to have nail polish on and like a bunch of other stuff that I just happen to not have and be able to have the surgery, but I don't know. So, and I've been watching this um, series on YouTube, it's called Embarrassing Bodies, and it's like all these different, um, kind of like, this guy lost a lot of weight and he had like excess skin and it's like things like that, but there's also people with like teeth dental problems, because in England, and they have like, um, um, I think, I don't know what they said, but they, like there was a really high percentage of people with um, tooth decay and they were doing implants and stuff and showing it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is going to be terrifying. I mean, I have to get a bone graft, but that's like really minor. It's very like tiny and um, I have to get like a little silicone thing to make my gum stretch out a little bit because I don't have much gum there so that's gonna be happening Wednesday yay <laughs> so I've just been trying to manage my anxiety until then because I'm kind of like hoarding my medicines because I'm going to be here so much longer than expected and my doctors only gave me a certain amount of medication to get me through this so I would be back in North Carolina for the next appointment. So I've been hoarding like my pain medicine and my anxiety medicine and that's not good because I need to be taking them when I need to take them. Um, finally earlier today I did take my anxiety medicine because I had just been like so bad and I don't know how you guys get when you have anxiety like that like I get it like all through my body and um when I wake up like I rock a lot you know like creepy rock like in a horror story like although I guess that would be comforting too but like just kind of like shake and I guess it like just tires my muscles enough that I can just have a feeling of like not being tense and I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody but that's what I do, and um, I was just refusing to take my medicine because um, sometimes, like, when I have things happen to me, I just, my body's response is to just throw up, like, nonstop, and that's what happened last time, so I'm terrified that's going to happen again, and so the, my anxiety medicine is actually, like, a really small pill, and it's actually used for people when they take, um, when they get chemo for upset stomach. So it's kind of like the only thing I can get down and it dissolves super fast. Um, and it kind of relaxes my stomach muscle and everything. So yeah, so I've been kind of saving those for the surgery, just like anticipating the worst because why not? I mean, just worry about it makes things happen you know things happen when you worry about it I don't know why I worry about it I just I just need to let it go and like just I don't know but it's happening and that's really cool freaking I'm so pissed off 
So the other day, my dad was talking to me about the Oscars, and I stopped watching the Oscars a long time ago when, I don't even remember what it was, but like I was obsessed with a movie, and it got snubbed, and I was like, I'm never watching this again, because I got like emotional about it, and I was like, this is not healthy, like I'm not watching this anymore. But my dad informed me that Birdman with Michael Keaton won Best Picture over some of the best movies I've ever seen. And, like, the thing is that, like, I got so angry that everybody thought, like, I hated Birdman. It's not that I hated Birdman. Like, it was a really weird kind of interesting story. Um, I actually enjoyed... Um, Ed Norton and Emma Stone the most in it and um, who's the other one what's the other woman's name but the side stories the Michael Keaton part I thought was kind of creepy and Michael Keaton newsflash plays himself what like how can that win best picture like in 10 years do you think people are going to be watching Birdman like I watched American Sniper because lately I've been watching war movies because war movies make me like cry and I can't control it and with my codependency like I try to hold everything in so for my anxiety it's really great when I cry and so every once in a while when I'm feeling like not depressed and like you know not bad I'll watch a, a war movie and I watched Fury, and I watched Unbroken, and then I watched American Sniper. And I, at the end of that movie, was crying so hard that it was like that chest thing where your chest just heaves. And like, I went out, and my dad was awake, and I like, I made him hug me because I was just like, I was that emotional. Like, I cried. I cried probably for, I don't know, two hours off and on. It was amazing. Like, everything about that movie was perfection. And, um, and I don't know, like, the real American Sniper story. I didn't read the book. My dad did. Um, but him and I discussed a lot of it, and it matched up. So I think there's, like, a big debate about it. I don't really know. But it was by far one of the best movies I have ever seen. And Bradley Cooper, I am not a huge fan of him. I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm not. Like, George Clooney, like, those type of people. Like, I'm just not. Like, I like more, like, odd, weird actors. And Bradley Cooper was not. Like, he's just kind of like that normal, good-looking actor. But he was amazing in it like you could look at his face and see what he was thinking and like what was going on in his mind and stuff like it was a crazy performance and they got completely snubbed then um so I get pissed off and I'm like I'm gonna watch the rest of the movies on that freaking thing because I put Birdman on because I was like, oh, I'll fall asleep during this. Because a lot of times I'll put movies on or TV shows and then I fall asleep to them. Um, I didn't actually, but not because of the movie, but just because I wasn't falling asleep. And I ended up watching the whole movie, but I was like, well, that was so weird. Um, but I watched... Ugh, the Imitation Game was the next one I watched. And I didn't want to watch that because... Cumberbatch will forever be my Sherlock and I'm obsessed with him in that role and I think it's so hot in that role and I don't like to see him not in that role because it's kind of not attractive to me but I was like I gotta do it like I gotta do it this Selma like I'm gonna start watching these because this is pissing me off and then literally my dad has not watched a movie I don't know how long it's been since he watched a movie. My dad and I used to go every single week to see a movie, and he stopped and hasn't seen one yet. But American Sniper was the one he wanted to see, but I haven't been awake for it. But I, there's this part in the beginning that's very, the main character, Turing, he is very professor-like, and my dad's a professor, so I was like, oh, he's got to watch this part. So I'm like, Dad, you know, come watch this part. And he's like, how long? And I was like, five minutes. 
he ended up sitting on a stool and watching the entire movie. That's how freaking good it was. And Cumberbatch, I mean, you can't talk about anybody else's performance because he just was amazing. And he outshined everybody. Like, was crazy. He was that role. And they had such detail about, like, what really happened. And they took you from the very beginning to... Did they take it to you at the very end? Um almost to the very end and they hinted at the end that he had become like unhinged but um almost to the end of his life and it was really cool because I thought <laughs> I thought the movie was going to be like um I don't know if you guys ever saw this movie but like catch me if you can like I thought he was going to be like imitating people like for like forgery type stuff so I really didn't like wasn't interested I didn't know it was about Enigma which I've actually watched a documentary about and found really interesting. And so when I started watching it, I was like, oh, and it was the different aspects because I didn't know like the American type side, like they more talked about the enigma and like how the machine worked and stuff like that. And, um, that movie made me cry, like, because it was, I just made me emotional. Like it just, I can't talk too much about it cause I don't want to, I mean, it's not spoiling because it's based on a true story, but um, there were just parts that just made me so sad that, like, someone so amazing and brilliant and wonderful was per persecuted so much. Like, the single, to me, my opinion, the single most important technological... What do you call it? Invention. Ever. And this guy should have had an amazing life and been treated like a freaking god. But he wasn't. And, um, so it just, like, it was so good. Like, why would that not win? Like, even though American Sniper is definitely going to be, like, in my top ten favorite movies, I don't understand how other movies didn't. Now, I'm going to watch Selma which I heard is not very, like, innovative. Like, I heard it's um, very just kind of, like, historical or something. But, geez, this is, like, I've watched so many based on true stories. It's, like, unreal. Um, Unbroken was not as good as I thought it was going to be, but it was it was pretty good. I thought it was kind of, like, a G-rated version of it because it was just, like, I thought it was going to get really, really dark and gritty. I mean, we're talking prisoner, prisoner of war here, you know, like, but it didn't get as dark as I thought it was. And I thought that there were liberty, liberties taken that kind of, like, softened things. I don't know. But uh, I've just been watching movies like crazy. And I've been watching this weird... I think it's for old people because I asked my um, Carly. I asked her because she lives in Australia. And I'm like, do you watch this show? Because it's an Australian... You know, it's, like, Australian film production. Like, it's like very Australian and right like near where she lives and stuff and she's like no I have no idea what you're talking about and I'm like I think maybe like old people watch it but it's called the Dr. Blake um, mysteries and I am obsessed with them he's older but he's very attractive like I think he's like a more attractive Russell Crowe and I just think that he's great like I, and all the characters in it are so great it takes place in the 50s but not like Mad Men, like, is, it's, like, just, that's just not part of the story. It's just, like, really cool to see, like, the medicine and how he goes about doing things, but he's a doctor in a small town, and he solves these mysteries, and he's very, like, kind of bad boy about it, and, well, not bad boy, but, like, bad man about it, and, you know, he, like, annoys people a lot and, like, is very invasive and tries to figure out what's going on, and, doesn't take things at face value and I've just been obsessed with it and I feel really bad because I'm like the main character is like 49 years old I looked it up and I was like I think this is like for old people but I just love it I think it's so good and interesting and I love just like mysteries like that that are just like straight up mysteries and there's not like sadness there's not like weird but you do find out like p different parts of his like 
story and who he is and why he is the way he is and why he drinks so much and like things like that. So, um, I'm trying to like throw so many things at you guys because I know for me, like I'm always looking for like new shows and new movies and stuff like that, especially when I'm like isolating myself. I don't know if, if anybody else does this, but like when I have some, an event or something that's coming up that is going to cause me a lot of anxiety, I isolate like dark room what I need my dog and just try to stay as like calm and not have anything else around me that is gonna set me off and not even really that much interaction with you know like texting and things like that um, although I do like I miss my friends like crazy so I do like FaceTime here and there and like snapchat and stuff like that but Besides that, I've just been, like, crocheting and, um, just things that I can, like, focus on. And then I've also been, um, how much time do I have on here? Oh, it's too long. I'll do another video on, um, H1Z1. I've been playing that game, like, crazy. Uh, so I'll do another video on that. But, whew, yeah, I'm smiling a lot, but it's just kind of like masking because I'm not actually smiley Bella can you not do that um yeah I'm really I'm just I think I'm like naturally just worried and I don't know I just want it to be over with already I guess you know I want to start healing and I want to go back to North Carolina <laughs> I want to go home but I keep getting weather updates like every day, like snow, sleet, 20 degree weather. And I'm like, okay, wow, I'm in a t-shirt and like sat outside with my dog today. So maybe I shouldn't complain, but you know, it doesn't matter what temperature it is. My friends are all there and I just miss them like crazy. Um, but yeah, so that's a little update. Um, if you're the praying type, please pray for me. Um, I don't know if I'll do another video. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on and if I've been a little quiet or, um, but please leave comments. I love them. That's like my number one priority in life is to like answer your comments or get back to you on your comments and things like that. So, um, I have another video I filmed that I hopefully I'll edit soon and I think you guys are really going to like it. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys are having a pain free, stress free day. Um, I love you guys so much, and I'm sending out XO Bellows, and, <sighs> mm -hmm.